The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It is directed by Michael Chaves and is the eighth film in the now ongoing Conjuring universe. This was a movie that if you had asked me four years ago if I was anticipating it, my answer would have been a resounding yes. The first two Conjuring movies have been an absolute masterclass in modern horror and have become defining movies in the recent horror resurgence over the past couple of years. And the series had even bounced back after the blatant misfire that was Annabella with its sequel, Annabella Creation. In 2017, everything was looking up for the Conjuring universe. All the movies that were announced seemed like good ideas. Three out of the four that were already released were great. It really did seem like this horror cinematic universe was going to be a success. And then just a year later, The Nun came out. Without going into too much detail... That may be one of the worst horror movies I've ever seen. Being incredibly boring, over-reliant on jump scares, and just so poorly made that it was one of the hardest movies I've ever had to sit through. Then the third Annabelle movie came out and was even worse than the first one. The Curse of Layla Rona was incredibly lame. In just two short years, everyone, including myself, had gotten burnt out on the Conjuring series and just needed a break. So when this movie was announced, I honestly couldn't get too excited. Yes, both of the main franchise Conjuring movies are fantastic. That was the only reason I had to be even slightly excited for this movie. However, even then there was still some doubt, because what made both of those films top-tier horror was James Wan. His creative voice and gripping direction was what drove those movies. And the guy they got to replace him, Michael Chaves, directed Layla Rona. This movie just had everything stacked against it. I just couldn't get behind it. But thankfully, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It was a return to form for the franchise. Gone are the obnoxious jump scares and completely throwaway scripts. They are replaced with the same great tense, getting under your skin creepiness, and a really well-told story. This movie honestly kind of sticks out within the franchise. While it's noticeably not that scary or unnerving for the majority of its runtime, I still find myself heavily invested. The trailers kind of misled me here. I thought this was going to be more of a courtroom drama investigation type movie. While that is an element of the plot, this is a film about Ed and Lorraine Warren. They are the heart of this film. And I thought that was the best possible outcome for this movie. Both Patrick Wilson and Vieira Farmiga have become these characters. I don't see them as just playing a part really well. Their performances feel so lived in and as if I was just watching real people. They have great chemistry, both well work well on, with each other and by themselves, and they are just fantastic here. Even if I couldn't say their performances are Oscar-worthy by any means, they are what drove this movie and kept me so invested. It also doesn't hurt the film at all that the story we are given here really worked for me. Even if I found myself slightly disinterested towards the start of the movie, once the second act started to roll around, I was hooked. The tension started growing, the scares were becoming more frequent, the pacing was becoming smoother. Even if it never went outside the box of what you would expect of a Conjuring movie, it executed the formula extremely well. This movie was a really well-told story. Even if the scares are at a minimum for the majority of its runtime, like I was talking about earlier, this is a plot-driven movie that has a really, really great plot. And I think that's something that a lot of the other Conjuring movies really failed at, having good, engaging plots, and this one probably has the strongest out of the series, even though I do think the first two movies are way better. A lot of credit has to be given to Michael Chaves for how well he recreated James Wan's unique and fluid camera work. While it never reached the heights of those first two Conjuring films, it still was really solid all around the board. Chaves was a major question mark heading into this one, and he really proved that he was capable of directing a good Conjuring movie. And even though I did really enjoy the more plot-driven, mystery and investigation side of the movie, seeing the Warrens' relationship grow, the pieces start to unravel as they went deeper into the mystery, the just all-around solid storytelling that was being presented to me, that was all great. However, I don't think this would be a good of a movie if it weren't for the last act. Once they figure out what's really going on and we start heading towards the film's climax, it really starts to pick up. The tension is fully raised, the scares start to get under your skin, the unsettling nature of this movie reveals itself. This is just a really good horror filmmaking. It reminded me of why I love those first two movies so much and how creepy yet well told those stories could be. The Conjuring 3 may not be the absolute best horror movie ever made. 
The first act kind of drags. The scares are at a minimum for the majority of it. Even for as well of a job that he did, Michael Chaves is just not James Wan. However, this was, a, this was still a really well-made horror film. The story that was told here was a solid and an entertaining one. The unsettling third act was a ton of fun, and Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga's performances were fantastic. Even, it could, even if it couldn't quite reach the same heights as its counterparts, The Conjuring the Devil Made Me Do It is still a really solid horror movie on its own, and I'm going to give it a light B+.